What? What, what? Uh, I can't pronounce that, but thank you for the follow. <laughs> Welcome. Is your name really I can't pronounce that? That would, be no. an, that would be an amazing Twitch name. That would be a really good Twitch handle. Usually if I'm going to post something on Reddit, uh, I can't pronounce that is now a prop tart. <laughs> Greetings, fellow makers! Hey, it's Bill Duran here, prop maker, <laughs> prop maker extraordinaire. <laughs> Welcome to my shop down here in the basement. Today, we're going to work on this dwarven-inspired foam sword. This was a project I was working on to uh, sort of showcase a bunch of the skills that are in my new book, Foam Smith Two: How to Forge Foam Weapons. If you haven't got that book, you really ought to go check it out at punishprops.com. Uh, today we'll be doing all of the detail work on here. It's very plain right now. I would like it to be a little bit more ornate. Uh, you can see that this is squishy EVA foam. I will uh, draw out some designs here inspired by some artwork from Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. And then I'll use some foam that I've got hiding over there to uh, build up all of that wonderful detail. And then if we have time, I will seal it with some latex rubber. So. Buckle up! This is going to be a fun one. I've got some reference images here I pulled from some of the art books I got um, on The Hobbit. And uh, a lot of these are just really cool looking dwarven designs. So I'm going to just go through, pick out some things I like, and try and incorporate them into this sword. Uh, like this, this one right here. I really like this design a lot. And try and translate that kind of to the shape that I've got on my sword. So... I've got my uh, workbench right here. I'm just going to do a little bit of drawing and doodling and see what I can come up with. So I've got my ruler here. I have a nice sharp knife and then I'm just going to cut out some thin strips right here. All right, and then these thin strips here will be used whoa, to uh, make this pattern that I drew out on my template to make the designs on this pommel piece here. So I'm just going to cut out some more of these strips, transfer this pattern over to the uh, uh, pommel, and then glue them down. In order to transfer the, uh, the lines onto my foam, I've got them drawn out on the paper and I have a pointy awl, and I just poke through the paper into the foam below, and that will transfer the design. And then I'll know where to glue all of my foam strips like that and then there's just holes back there good to go there are a bunch of tiny holes poked into the surface and now I know where to put my foam so I've been working away at this and I've got um, some lines glued down this is just more of that EVA foam so basically uh, I just cut a little piece uh, a little bit of a corner off there and then this will get glued over the line that I poked so I can just lay down a little bit of super glue in the area where it needs to go. So I've got my super glue there and then this line of foam can just lay right on top of it. And then I just tap it down to get rid of some extra super glue. And then I can trim the line. Hey, thank you for the follow. Once that's trimmed, we have a nice piece right there and we can continue the design. So, I cut a little bit of a piece there. That will go like so. And again, I just put a little bit of glue on it. Like that. And then I can lay it down in line like that. And follow the design that I poked down there with my awl. Which is really cool. And then I can continue. This piece can wrap all the way around the foam gluing it the entire way. And that's that. There are all of our lines. Again, this is just a little thin two millimeter craft foam glued down in lines. And uh, I'm calling that good. I'm calling that all done right there. So next, I'll work on the blade. We're doing the same thing with the blade as we did with the pommel, which is hiding. Where'd that go? Oh, there it is. There we go. Uh, just a slightly bigger scale with thicker pieces of that same EVA foam. So this stuff is just getting glued down 
uh, in a line like so and then wrapped around the blade just like we did before with the uh, with the pommel I just lay down a little bead of super glue line up my piece like so let it dry real quick and then I'll trim a little part of it down add the next part that looks like it needs just a touch more glue under it. There we go. Then this part that I just cut off can get flipped around and glued down like that and wrapped around. Like this. And there we go. There we go just wrap it around like the rest of the the parts there that's one of my favorite parts about using this uh, this foam is I can just take this part that's supposed to look like metal it will eventually look like metal but I can just wrap it around by hand just like that and then finish it up on the other side and keep going Ta -da! here is our blade now with all of those lovely detail lines on there and there's the pommel uh, now is the time, I think, to glue these together. I'm going to seal this with latex, but what I'll do is I'll glue these two pieces together and then I can hold it by the handle while I'm brushing on the latex and then I can put this in a clamp to suspend it while I'm working on it. But it is definitely time to glue this together and I'll just use some super glue on this piece right here like that and glue it down. So here we go. No looking back now. Let's just commit to this thing. Once I do this, it's going to be like that forever. Goody. Don't put it on backwards. Thank you for the advice, Brittany. Just like that. And it's pretty committed at this point. <laughs> there we go. And it doesn't want to come out. So that is our sword all glued together. And now I can get ready to seal it as I hit my microphone with the sword. Ta-da! To heat seal this, I'm going to use a blowtorch. It's crazy, I know. Uh, I'm going to be careful with the blowtorch. You could use a hot or a heat gun if you want, but I'm going to do that. And just run it quickly along this, the, just, just graze the surface. Carefully. There's a little bit more of a shine to it. Any of the fuzzy bits that are still remaining will get torched off, which is really uh, nice for the texture. Working in a well ventilated area, of course. There we go. I don't want to touch it while it's warm either because it'll leave fingerprints. But uh, it cools down pretty quickly and then I'll just get the pommel real fast. There we go. And there we go. Nice texture. Everything kind of tightened up a bit. And I'm happy with that. All right, cool. Watch those arm hairs, yeah. No kidding. Heat sealing kind of tightens up all the pores in the foam. Uh, gives us a better surface to work with. And if there are any little fuzzy bits on the edges that we, we sanded, those get torched off. And uh, just better for our, uh, our process. I'm sealing this guy with a latex rubber. So I've got a bit of that mixed up here. It's just latex rubber that's been thinned a little bit with distilled water. And then I put a little bit of pigment in it. This is a screen printing ink. It's basically a really thick acrylic paint that's all been mixed up in my cup right here, ready to go. And I like to apply it with a foam brush. I just have a hunk of foam right here. And then I'm just gonna brush it on, making sure to get the uh, latex in all of the cracks and crevices to ensure that we get a nice seal on all of our piece here. So I'm just dabbing it on to make sure that it goes in all the little crevices. I don't want it to be too thick or else it'll take forever to dry. 
but I do want to make sure I get really good coverage and especially make sure I get in all of those little nooks and crannies uh, to make sure it's nice and sealed. Whoop. There we go. I'm uh, brushing a little bit over the handle here and that'll be overlapped by a piece of leather when we finish this. Like so. There is one layer of brushed on latex and it's it's gray but it will dry black. In fact the handle here has started to dry just a little bit. Um, I'll let that dry just about all the way and then I'll brush out another layer and then I'll probably spray a bunch of layers on top of that. I have a critter spray gun and I have an air compressor and that's what I'll use to do that. But for now I'm just going to call it pretty good. Um, if you were doing this at home you could just brush on more layers yourself like so. There you go. That is our Dwarven Sword with all of that wonderful detail added to it and with one good layer of latex sealed on it. I'll add many more layers. I can brush them all on like I just did or I can uh, spray them which I'll probably end up doing with my Critter Sprayer. Um, but there you go. That is the gist of adding detail and sealing with latex a foam weapon. If you want to know more about foam armor and foam weapon making, then you'll want to check out the foam smith books that we have for sale on PunishedProps.com. We have both digital and print, and print versions of both Foam Smith 1 and 2. Foam Smith 2 is our weapon book. It's out now, um, and a bunch of them should be showing up at my house any day now, and then we will ship them out to you wonderful people. Thank you guys so much for watching the live stream, uh, twitch.tv slash punished props. And uh, you want to go over there and follow us if you want to catch some of these live. They happen every Tuesday at noon Pacific. Until the next live stream, you guys, uh, take care. Uh, measure twice. Try not to hurt yourself.